Okay, welcome to part three of our gravitational redshifts theory. We're getting close now. Part three, we're going to talk about the hyper laser cannon. Assumptions located on the surface of a large massive object aimed directly upwards, opposite direction to the center of a large massive object, no atmospheric attenuation, power enough to be detected beyond the gravitational field of a large massive object. So here are the equations for a hyperlacent cannon. Remember when we did the, the previous lecture, we talked about E equals mc squared using the mass of a round, okay? Well, here we are using something new. It's going to be called the energy of the photon. And we're going to use the mass of the photon, c squared. So we get E equals mc squared. In the case of a photon, the mass of the photon is hf over c squared, where h is Planck's constant, f is the frequency, c squared is the velocity of light squared. That's what mp is. So basically, photons have mass. Well, we have the same instance here. When the photons leave the hyperlaser cannon, okay, they have an initial energy of epi. That was the initial photon energy, which is equal to MPI C squared. And we and after it has escaped the gravitational pull of the large massive object, it has lost an energy of delta EP, which is the energy lost by the photon due to gravity. And we get the final energy of the photon, EPF. Well, let's have this equation here. But this time, we just remember this equation? This is the the energy removed, the kinetic energy moved from around in our hypervelocity machine gun, but with the mass of the photon substituted. We substitute this into this equation and the mass equation, we get this. Okay. And then we say, well, if we do a little further, we say HFRS, which is the final frequency, is equal to MPFC squared. HFI equals MPI C squared. Okay, so initial mass of photon, fi final mass of photon, initial frequency, redshift frequency. What do we get? FRS over FI equals HFRS over HFI. That's obvious, which is MPF C squared, MPI over C squared. And as we remember, MPF c squared is equal to this. Plug it into here, we get this, and we do some math, and we end up with the gravitational redshift equation, which is used, commonly used in physics today. So let's do a comparison. With a hypervelocity machine gun, we have ER equals MRC squared, EP equals MPC squared. So really the difference is, is we have the mass of the hypervelocity of the round. And here we have the mass of the photon. Then we have the initial, the final energy is equal to initial energy minus the change in energy. Same thing, except for photons. And then we have the change in energy is this. The only difference is the rest mass of the, uh, of the round and the initial mass of the photon. Everything's pretty much the same, but here's where it gets different. MR is equal to this, and MP is equal to this. So this is really what has happened here, is we've made the assumption that light is made up of photons, light has mass, and the mass of the photon is proportional to the frequency. We take all those assumptions, we plug it into classical physics with a little bit of relativity moved in, and we come up with redshift theory. Stay tuned for part four, we come up with a new redshift theory.